Oof. All right. Let's talk about the Mac Mini M1. Hmm. This is the thumbnail. Yeah. Okay, so just to give you an update, my Mac Mini M1 still doesn't work. Um, I tweeted about that and Apple actually replied, Apple support. We had a nice conversation. They gave me some tips and links and we tried online, so to speak, uh, some stuff. I tested out all of my peripherals, hubs, keyboards. I even had to pull out my old trusty and not so clean far cut keyboard and the mighty mouse still works oh god uh yeah so we tested this so we wanted to try to see if the mx master mouse and mx keys are an issue with the dongle or whatever loop deck uh, different monitors so we tried different things without the call digit ts3 plus without the owc Thunderbolt hub or all kinds of other stuff I have connected. Um, at one point I thought the display link driver to have three screens going was the issue. No, it was not. And basically the system crashes when the GPU gets a little bit too much to do or whatever. So basically with this simple edit, this is just a quite simple edit and far cut, nothing fancy. Oh, I did change something here. Um, as you can see, even with my, this is the 2018 Mac Mini, uh, snappy timeline. Um, huh. um, yeah, with this little simple project, this is A7 R Mark III footage, bit drone, nothing fancy. There was like black frames, dropped out, beach ball, crash. Well, there you go. You just saw the issue that I have with my Mac Mini here. It just flashes and then it restarts. Or even browsing in the internet or even sending out the crash report. So it didn't really work out too good. Then they set up a call with an Apple support representative. But in the end, uh, he couldn't really help. It was a quite quick call. I told him everything I did and tested out and he said, well, basically two options, give the unit back or get a replacement unit. And in the end, I decided to hmm, give it back. I don't want a replacement unit. Here's why. A few reasons, a few little things, but one big one, even though it is a small one, but it is a big one. So, first of all, connectivity. Yes, uh, you can get away with the TS3 Plus and the OWC hub. Works fine, but still, it seemed like it was on the edge of connectivity. Um, and that way also the display connectivity is tricky because the unit itself really just supports two displays. Then there's also the plugins and software support that will come, I guess, but some stuff, especially Red Giant, I know how they work. That will be a bit before they update because it's a deep update. It's a FX plugin update and that still doesn't work too good, I think. Even Apple has some issues on that front. So that will take a while, too long, I guess. And then the big issue that is a small issue, but is actually a big issue is calibrating your displays, color. Um, I think how this works with the display link and USB dongle and stuff like that, that will be a challenge for the hardware and software solutions to actually communicate with the displays and the system and calibrate it on a professional level, so to speak. And this is the biggest issue and that's why I decided to send it back and work with my 2018 Mac Mini with the eGPU. So I did manage to get two tests going. Uh, there's a trick actually, I have a separate video about that here. <laughs> here. Um, how you can run Final Cut in Rosetta mode. There's no official way, there's no uh, 
checkmark, like with Logic. You have to use a terminal code, so to speak, to open up Final Cut and it doesn't run too stable. But I managed to do two tests with the same plugins going as on the old Mac. That was the essential key to test this out. So there was the 4K to 1080 mixed media project that I tested. And on the Mac Mini with the eGPU with the RX 5500, it was like 7 minutes 11 seconds. Export time with the Radeon 7 actually was 7 minutes 19, so a bit slower, tiny bit. And with the Mac Mini here, I was able to do it in 4 minutes and 32. So quite a bit faster, I'd say. I was surprised by that. And then there was the other project. This is the quick A7S Mark III edit with a little bit of color corrections, nothing fancy. And the eGPU Mac Mini with the RX 5500 was 1 minute and 35. And the Radeon 7 was 1 minute and 32. This was a 4K project and a 4K export. And the Mac Mini with the M1 did it in 2 minutes 18. So a bit slower, but still good. And the older Mac Mini without the eGPU did it in 4 minutes 20 seconds. So, all right. So that I did get to test out. So there is potential there, I think. This is a nice snappy little unit. It is silent. It was almost too silent in my edit room with this thing without the eGPU going and the Mac Mini fan of the older 2018 Mac Mini. But yeah, it's not ready for prime time yet. So for now, I'm sending this back and wait for the next chapter, so to speak. But right now, I'm still happy with the performance with the 2018 Mac Mini and the eGPU. Who knows, maybe the new cards, the RX 6800 card, uh, will be supported. It is not yet. You can't get one anyway, so um, maybe I will test this out as soon as this is supported. Um, yeah, we will see. So, there you have it. This is the last video about the Mac Mini M1, I guess, from my page, but there will be more Final Cut 10 content um, about presets. And also I want to make a updated video about the Final Cut to Logic and back workflow, because I guess it's uh, a little bit long in the tooth, my video about that. It's quite old, six years, okay. Um, yeah, so looking forward to that, I guess. If you have any questions, let me know. If you're new around here, subscribe if you want and like this video or not. Hmm. And uh, see you in the next one. Cheers and good night. <laughs>